Hello everyone, this is Ray Space. Recently on Twitter, Chris Combs decided to meme this meme and I guess humorously suggests Super Heavy with uh, X-37B on top, thereby combining a reusable first stage with a reusable space plane, though not really a reusable second stage. And I'm sure it was just a humorous little fun thing, uh, but you can't do this sort of thing on Twitter while I'm there and not expect me to think about it a little bit. And uh, also Scott Manley. Scott Manley also thought about it a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, uh, humorously suggesting that maybe it should be two X-37Bs on top. After all, the X-37s are really small. But there is another solution to the smallness of the X-37B in terms of putting it on top of Super Heavy. Uh, we could probably put do a dozen X-37Bs on Super Heavy given the right situation, but rather than do that, uh, I came up with something else. Of course, what I'm talking about is a really big X-37B, uh, thus named X-37D, because actually I'm not the first one to think of a large X-37B. Boeing itself thought of that with the X-37C, which was supposed to be a crude version, and that was about 1.6 to 1.8 times the size of the original. Uh, I'm going with four times. So we have a X-37 that's four times the size of the one that currently gets launched. Well, Atlas V, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, all launchers for this little space plane from the Air Force. I've uh, not made it very specific because <laughs> I don't want the, the Department of Defense to get on my case or anything. Um, there will be a original sized version of it that will be released in addition to this large size one. I have to do some fixes though, so uh, those will be coming up later and I'll do another video on that. One fix is, well, the inside of the cargo bay door uh, apparently does not have its normal slip the right way there. So there's little things like that. And then the inner edge of this wing is transparent, same normal situation. So I've got some things to mess with and uh, yeah, some touch-ups like that. And then I'll test it to make sure it can actually re-enter and then I'll release it. But the reason I'm interested in these tweets is because they bring up a lot of interesting questions with regard to the possibility of putting a space plane on top of Super Heavy. I'm always interested on, in putting a space plane on top of Super Heavy anyway. Uh, there, there's a question of what kind of engines we want to use. How I've scaled it to 4x, but should it be larger? If we do scale it up, does that mean that it can still re-enter the same way, or is it going to be messed up? Because when you scale up a plane, it doesn't actually retain the aerodynamics exactly. I, the, the whole principle of the smaller scale wind tunnels is that actually when you scale things down you need less wind in order to make it work out the way a larger scale one does. So we have to keep that in mind. So what kind of payload do we get with this? Should I scale it larger? There's all sorts of stuff going on here. Right now what I've got in here is 60 tons. So that is the perspective payload initially, and it's my usual avgas, so it doesn't get mixed up with anything else. Uh, this is not your normal X-37 because we do have Raptor engines on it. So we've got two of the Raptor vacuums. They do gimbal a little bit right now. And I've filled this up with methane and oxygen. I filled it up as much as I can given the available volumes in the nose and tail. So there would be a nose tank and a tail tank. And I calculated that that would be about 600,000 liters. So it's much smaller than Starship. Starship is about twice the mass of this, but not in terms of dry mass. The dry, actually, um, I've got a little bit of a problem with the wings right now. So technically, we should probably make them heavier because uh, they're not giving me the right mass. They're giving me the original scale mass instead of the large-scale mass. So I'm going to tweak the mass strength multiplier to compensate for that. And we are going to see how well it does given its current scale, but maybe we need to scale it up further so it's a better match for Starship. Uh, what I was going to say was that the dry mass of the X-37 body is pretty heavy. Uh, unfueled, it's about 80 tons. So the dry mass of this is 
uh, probably 90 tons with the landing gear. So that is the situation. All right. So given that, let's see whether it can carry 60 tons to orbit like this. And then maybe I'll scale it up to a slightly larger scale. The reason I scaled it to this is so that I could fit a little bit better. I don't think at this scale it'll cause aerodynamic problems for Super Heavy. After all, Starship has fins too. But we'll see. And then when I scale it up, maybe that'll cause further problems. So this is just a straight up payload test. You can see why I can't really tell right now. Especially since I hope to reserve some fuel in the Super Heavy. Uh, whether we can get to orbit or not, uh, the delta V reading sure isn't clear about that. So that is why we have to do this test. And it's just going to be a orbital test to see whether it can make it. And I'll be contro controlling it manually because uh, with this payload I don't know when Super Heavy should shut off. So I'll, I'll try to reserve enough fuel in a logical way. but. Since the payload is lighter, since you know the Starship replacement is lighter, uh, it's going to have trouble doing the return to launch site thing. I might have to consult with Pekka on how much I should be reserving there, but for now, here we go. And on it goes through some clouds apparently. Well, even though I'm controlling it, we should get at least one shot of it like this. Alright. And this shot. So I'll have to figure out how to fix the weight, the mass of the wings and such. FAR should, you know, be able to calculate that. I told FAR the dimensions of it properly. But it seems to still be going off of the smaller version. It doesn't overwrite the calculation. And even though I've put it in the right order in the config, I don't know why. I don't know why it's got this problem. I just used my normal tile textures instead of trying to copy the the original exactly for the X37. And the X37 of course does not use methane and oxygen. Now, the smaller version one that I'll eventually release will have the proper propellant. This one is meant for meant as a starship replacement of course. Okay, I really need to oops. Really need to see how much we're gonna have left. Okay, we should probably crawl down. I'm gonna say twenty-five seconds. Okay, I'm just gonna shut it off. And on we go. Right now it's really tight for orbit. You can add the 5,200 to our 2,700 and such. And that's just above the 7,800 we need. So it is going to be tight. So there they are. Uh, uh, would probably need a recess in the back here to really properly mount them. And we also would like a little bit more than the spare that we currently have because it's supposed to come back down, right? So, yeah. I mean, I don't even think we have any spare. I think we can't really do 60 tons with the tra trajectory that we just had, reserving the fuel that we reserved in the Super Heavy. No. Let me allow it to roll over. I haven't put the solar panel or any of that. Everything in the payload bay I will definitely be leaving to the user. 
so I'm not going to put anything in the payload bay including the solar panel. You guys gonna have to find, figure out the robotics of that business because I want this to be generic. We probably don't need such a large solar panel for this large version. The, sol the small version maybe, but I'll think about the solar panel a bit. But I think flexibility is good in this case. Okay, so a little bit more than 200 meters per second short, but then when we add in the amount that we need for for re-entry, that'll be more than that, so we have to keep that in mind. Uh, well, I was testing the RCS, but while the RCS is working, it's clear I have to fix the plumes on the RCS. Uh, it's certainly maneuvering and using the RCS, we can see the methane and oxygen being consumed. But no plumes, so that's another thing. All right, but let's see what we need to tune the payload down to. Let's just say I want about 500 more on the top there. Well, me asking for 500 is too much. Clearly, uh, upscaled one of these would be better. We need more fuel capacity. I don't want to go below 50 tons myself. Wonder how many starlings could fit in that. Okay, let me just try 50 tons and see. Re-entry testing is going to have to be separate. That is time consuming and I had to make the model first so I think I might produce a modeling time lapse video with some voiceover you know the blender side of how I made this as initially a members only video and then a broader release depending on how that goes. Technically I'm not waiting for it to look filled up but I'm impatient let's just go. Fifty tons. Well, we should be through max Q. As expected, there's no real flipping threat or anything like that. Okay, throttling down. Switch off. Okay. All right, we are off. Seems like we have a little bit more. Adds up to about 8,100 instead of 7,800, but we're gonna lose some of that, of course. And now it's not looking so good. How did that happen so quickly? I don't know, I mean, I thought we would have more than enough, but now it's not looking so good. I need a version of the meme with that guy with the butterfly in his hand and asking, is it cursed? Maybe it is cursed. Okay, well, maybe the RCS can get us to orbit, but I'm thinking I need to scale this puppy up. I was originally matching the back end with Super Heavy because that makes sense, but maybe we should match the mass of Starship, that would be better. And then also sort of match Super Heavy to the main diameter of this instead of the back end where it flitters out. It's a thought, but, or I'll split the difference, it depends on which dimension actually matches the mass of Starship best. I don't want to go too far though. Definitely not past the point where this diameter is 9 meters, which is the diameter of Super Heavy. So that is my limit. 
Okay, well, that's enough. We are in orbit. It's just that I don't think we have enough to deorbit and get back home safe. So 50 tons of cargo is too much. I have other fixes to do. Uh, so probably less than that. But I want it to really probably not beat Starship. No, I mean, maybe. But uh, I, I doubt we can get to beat Starship. The dry mass is going to go up if I scale this up anymore. And... We were expect we would expect that it's gonna be double the dry mass for double the overall mass, right? If we scale it up right now it's half the fuel mass of Starship. If we want the full mass of Starship, then we expect that the dry mass of this will be double as well. So we're talking about 160 tons. So that is the downside. And we'll have to fit more engines, of course. That's not so much of a downside, that's expected. So I'll think about it, but there you have it. Uh, watch what you say on Twitter, you know? <laughs> I, might, I might turn it into an idea. With the sun setting on us and X-37 in orbit here, though very barely, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.